Let's get more now on the doctor who used to work for the company assessing people for disability benefits and has now criticised his former employer. In an interview with the BBC, Greg Wood says the methods Atos uses are unfair. Atos denies the allegations. The DWP, the Department for Work and Pensions, was not available for an interview this evening, but earlier the Employment Minister, Mark Hoban, spoke to Sophie Hutchinson and insisted the assessments are completely unbiased. We've been reviewing the uh, process now for the, over the last uh, three or four years. This is the fourth independent review is happening at the moment. Uh, yeah, and actually the criteria that have been used, the assessments that have been used, you know, have been ones that have been designed with, in support, of, in conjunction with medical professionals, doctors and nurses, consultants, specialists in these areas. Uh, and it is meant to be, and it is, an objective assessment of someone's ability to function. That then helps inform the decision that we take about what level of benefits someone gets. If this were found to be true, though, you would be very concerned, wouldn't you, that doctors were not operating, allowed to operate in an independent way, and that medical knowledge was being twisted, when you're talking about some of the most vulnerable people in society. What's really important to me is that we have good quality decision making taking place, that uh, people in the department are making the right decisions based on information supplied to us uh, by our, at us. That's actually why we assess and look at the quality of the reports that doctors complete. So I want to make sure they're right. If they're not right, if they're not a good quality, then it's right we ask them to rework those and get the right outcome, better outcome. And what about, you know, the percentage of appeals that is increasing in terms of um, uh, uh, decisions being found in favour of claimants and the amount of money that that's costing? It, it's increasing. But 15, only 15% 15 of the fit-for-work decisions that we make are successfully over, overturned. What we're trying to do is to make sure that rather than people, people being written off on incapacity benefit, as they were in the past, people who spent years on there without being looked at, without being spoken to, without being checked to see whether their conditions improved. We want to tackle that. You know, we want to make sure that people are capable of work, they get to go into work and get the support they need. If they're not capable, they get the financial support that they deserve. And that, uh, that was the Employment Minister, Mark Hoban. And with me now in the studio is the disability rights campaigner, Lisa Egan. And Lisa, you've had uh, a number of assessments uh, under the auspices of ATOS. Just yes. tell us about uh, the assessments you've gone through with them. What, what do they entail? Uh I've had two different assessments. I had one uh, which is called the personal capability assessment um, and I had that to claim incapacity benefit when I first became too ill to work in 2007. Um, and that was uh, a pretty fair assessment of what you can and can't do. Um, you know, they prodded all my deformed bones and they asked us to you know, how many days of the week I'm just curled up in bed in agony and stuff like that. Um, and more recently, I had um, the uh, work capability assessment for employment spot allowance. I had that two days before Christmas uh, last year. Um, and that <laughs> is, is certainly a much more stringent assessment. Um, at one point, I was asked, what stops me from killing myself? Um, it's really that strange that and like cruel and weird. Yeah. That seems like an extraordinary question. Yeah. Um, leaving that question aside, <laughs> would you say that, in your opinion, the assessments have been reasonable? No, not at all. I mean, you know, the number of people who have to appeal their decisions and then, you know, the appeal is upheld, around 40% of appeals are upheld because so many decisions initially are incorrect. And, but in, in your personal experience of the assessments that you've gone through, did you find them reasonable or not? Um, <laughs> I, I had a really weird situation with my assessment just before Christmas. But my first assessment was smooth and, you know, painless. Um, but the one I had just before Christmas, uh, the next day, um, Atos told the Department for Work and Pensions, on behalf of whom they work, they told the Department for Work and Pensions that I hadn't shown up. Um, and so I had to send a photograph of myself to the DWP and say, this is what I look like, check Atos' CCTV. And, of course, because I was writing to the DWP anyway, um, I said, well, seeing as Atos told you that I didn't turn up, they probably haven't sent you my medical evidence either. So here's my form, um, here's a copy of my form and a copy of all the letters from my doctors, um, mm. just in case the Atos didn't send it to you. No, as frustrating as obviously that was to you, that could yeah. be put down to some sort of administrative error, couldn't it? I mean, uh, in, in terms of the substance of the assessments and what's been claimed, by this doctor that we've heard from today who used to work for Atos. Are you surprised to hear what he's saying? No, not at all. Um, you know, like I said, you know, the rates of appeals are very high and the rates of successful appeals are very high. Um, it doesn't know. necessarily follow, though, that the um, assessments were 
unfair or well, twisted in some way. Though, yes, does it? it does, because if the assessment had been fair and not twisted, then the person would have been found unfit or fit for only a limited type of work in the first place. They wouldn't have had to go on to appeal. Um, so, yeah, mm. it, it absolutely backs uh, uh, up. Of course, you know, Atos is, is, is denying these uh, allegations, these claims, but what would you like to see happening in terms of the way these assessments are carried out? And have, have they always been, in your opinion, uh, not particularly helpful, or was there a time when you were assessed where you thought that, that it was a fair process? Um, under the personal capability assessment for incapacity benefit, um, employment and support allowances precursor, um, the, assess was, the um, assessment was certainly much fairer than it is now. Um, they took into account things like um, your ability to change out of your clothes and into pyjamas once you got home at the end of a day of work because, you know, um, if they only look at what you can do in the workplace, you know, it could be that, you know, by the end of a working day, you are too ill and in too much pain to change your clothes, eat some dinner, you know, grab your nighttime medication. Um, and, you know, the precursor assessment took all those factors into account as well. Okay, Lisa, thank you very much okay. for uh, telling us about your experience. Lisa Egan. Okay.